Okay, I think we are ready to place that motor right there. Start placing it in place. So I think I'll uh, line up the body where I think it might live. And then we'll grab the motor and start putting it in place. Is that how it goes in? Are we going to put it in backwards? That would be interesting now, wouldn't it? I think we'll... Uh, okay, I think that we will not put it in that direction. But we will put it in the normal direction. So Let's see what we got here. I think it's a little low. What do you guys think? So the issue I got here is my boom. My boom doesn't go that way far enough compared to the rear bumper. So that's as far as I could go back. So I think what I'll do is I'll lift it up to about right height, block it, and then I can roll the car. Let's we'll see if that'll work. So I need blocks.
Okay, we're sitting on blocks. I think I have to pull out of here now. Okay, let's take a look at this thing. Just set the engine in there. It's sitting on blocks on the ground. Let's see what we got here. Looks like we got room to shift it. Now hitting the dash. Need to flip the rear end up where it belongs. And then figure out the drive line. The drive line will control <clears throat> the placement of the body. I'm going to make a drive line, I don't know how long, maybe a foot, 10 inches, we'll see. And then that'll dictate where the body is placed with the motor. But it looks like this motor should fit under a hood, because like, like the radiator, the back of the radiator, if it was even with the shroud, it's in front of the fan a few inches. So, I like how it's coming together. It looks a little shorter now. It looked pretty long without the hood and the, the grill on it. So, I think I'll go take lunch. When I come back, I'll Position the rear end where it goes, and we'll start playing with the drive line. The drive line is, I'm not sure where it's at. Oh, there it is. It's in the pile. So, but I think the engine could come up a little higher. I got a, um, what, a six by six under it. So we got six inches under the lowest point. And I think that uh, we've got a couple more inches there to go. Let's see what we got here. Let's take a straight edge. And uh, see what the hood is. What it looks like here. So, if that represented the hood, and that represented the air filter. Looks like we could go another three inches, three and a half to the hood. So, I think what I'll do is I'll aim for, uh, what is this block here? I'll just put another two inches under it. Yeah, that's six. So we'll aim for eight inches. Well, that's actually, that's not even the lowest point. Looks like the, looks like the pan is a little lower. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll shim that up there and there. 
Let's bring it up two inches more. What's this look like? Looks like, looks like we could go another inch there. I don't mind trimming that. So, and also what do we got here? What's, what's below the floor level? So if we had a straight line there, Yeah, another two inches. Yeah, that would be right about there. So, you know, that's not much transmission sticking up. So, I think another two inches will be fine. So, I think I'll go eat lunch. This is Saturday. It's my day off. And, um, and it's beautiful outside. I'd call that a spring day. It's the warmest it's been in. Oh, forever. I hope this comes through on the video. It looks really nice on the phone here. So, I'm going to go eat lunch. And then I'll be back. Back on this thing here. So, I like it. I like how it's coming together. Okay, let's check out the hidden treasure map. There's, uh, there's always a piece of cardboard inside these. Well, I don't know, always, but quite often you'll find a piece of there's a piece of cardboard in there. I don't know what it's for. Is it for noise dampening? I'm not sure. But it's always fun to. It's always fun to take it out. In there. Here it comes. There it is. Okay, here's our hidden treasure map. It was inside. It's just it's not very heavy. It's just a chunk of cardboard tube. I'm not sure what it's for. Stop vibration. Uh, stop. It's a noise dampening thing. I don't know. But, uh, I don't know what that was all about, but okay. So I cut out a little over 36, 36 and a quarter. And the way I came up with that is I just placed the body and the frame, put the motor and the axle where I wanted them, and that's what it turned out to be. So. I might have made it a little too long, and that's that's okay. I guess I could always shorten it later. I'm just going to tack it right now, just for mock-up. And uh, if it's right, late at a later date, we'll weld it up good. So center to center, it's 15 inches. So we got 15 inches, 15 inch long. And I figure we have four inches of up and down. So, let's see what that does. So I'm going to clean this up, give it a little couple tackaroos, and I'll put it in the car.
You see that? Is that better? Yeah, the sun is just coming in. I can't tell what we got here. Yeah, that, oh, that's that seems about right. But it looks like I got a bar in the way. Yeah. Yeah, this bar is right here is in the way. So, yeah, we'll just have to guess here. There we go, right about there. I think that's about right. Okay, today I want to make a hood. I got hood my hood material right here. Got a 55 gallon barrel. It's a barrel I got free. Anyway, I want to be able to store this outside when I'm not working on it throughout the week. But now that I got a motor, I want to make sure it's covered up. So, nothing's mounted up here yet. But I figured I, I could at least get going on the hood. So, so I, I did some di dimensions. The model A hood is 30 and a half from there to there. And the, the, the model T body from the center down over the edge to there is about 16 on the front and 14 on the no 14 on the front, 16 on the back. So I need a piece 32 by 30 and a half plus enough edge to, to crimp over. The edges on these hoods are um, crimped over. Let's see if I can do this and not fall apart. Yeah, see right there. Got about a uh, quarter to three sixteenths edge there, bent over. So I'd like to do that. Also, um, I don't know if I'll put any design in it. Like this has a ridge, but Model T is smooth. We'll just see how it goes. First of all is to take that barrel, <clears throat> cut it up so I have a flat piece to work with. So, so last week I worked on the bumper. A rear bumper that fits that car or that car is basically done just need to clean it so okay let's get to work on the barrel <clears throat> all right looks like i need to pick some cord before i need to do before i do anything it's uh, shorted out over there on the on the bench so we'll give it a uh, good old-fashioned whatcom county rebuild here Looks like it was fixed at one time with the blue tape, but blue tape moved away. So let's uh, let's fix her up. It's kind of cold out, and this tape doesn't stick that good in the cold. Instead of the instead of the knife. Hear that? 
train horn. Maybe 24. Anyway, it's been around a while. So let's. Uh, oh, yeah, look at another repair right there. This, t this is in pretty good shape. Let's see if we got any other bare wires. Looks like the outer sheath is breaking away. And now it leaves those other wires exposed. I think we're good. I think that's good for today. Are you in the hue? Let me check it out. Oh yeah, you can see what I'm doing. Okay. you pick up and um, there's the label but can't read it so. I probably picked this barrel up three or four years ago I picked two of them up at the same place I don't remember what was in them but it's been sitting on its side Okay, it's got some stuff in it. Let's see if we got it. Oh, it's leaking on the ground there. Yeah, let's. Uh... Yeah, it looks oil. It looks like oil to me. So, we're starting to make a mess. So, I think I'll find a piece of cardboard. I don't know. It's nice inside, though. It's nice that it's oiled up. You get something for free and you think, oh, that's a great deal, it's free. Well, it's not actually free. You know, I had to spend time going to pick it up. And then it's been sitting around outside. And, and now i got to deal with the oil. I think it is oil. It looks real oily. It could be hydraulic fluid. Some kind of, some kind of oily-based stuff. Um, so... Free isn't always free. Sometimes the best things that are free, you should never, never bring home. I'm not regretting bringing this home. I'm just saying that free doesn't mean free. There's always a cost. You know, I'm putting time into it right now just to cut it up. Um, I priced sheet metal the other day and for a 4x8 sheet, um, like, 18 to 20 gauge it was like a hundred to 140 bucks a sheet for a four by eight so this probably equals a, a almost three by seven so two of these two of 
two of these could equal a four by eight. But then, you know, it's dented, rusty, painted, oily. You gotta cut it out. So, it's not really free. But I'm happy I have it. We're gonna make a Model T hood out of it. Uh, the bottom and the top on these barrels are usually thicker. This is going outside. There's some good sludge. I don't know what happened. I mean, it's just, it's sludgy. How's that? Sludgy wudgy. What is a sludge? Okay, thinking about ready to lay it down and cut it. I might do that outside because I don't want to get oil all over the floor. So. Yeah, let's do that. It is a beautiful day today. This is uh, like my favorite time of the year. All right. Let's see what we can do here with this barrel. broke off look at that okay yes we're good enough all right that represents at least one hour one hour of my time probably over an hour What do you get out of it? You get, uh, yeah, it's about 33 and a half. 33 and a half. And I think it's about seven foot. Let's see what we get here. No, I was wrong. Six foot, it's five foot 10. 70 inches. 
So we got 70 inches by 34 and a half. Actually, no, 33 and a half. Oh, let's see, 0 0.025. Yeah, maybe three at the most. Yeah, 0 02. 025. So what is that? What does that mean? Well, let's get on the interwebs. Check it out. Um, we got here. Um, 16 gauge is 065. 14 gauge is 083. So I guess the bigger the number, the thinner. Well, let's see about 20 gauge here. Well, I need a chart. There's a chart. Okay, so let's see what we got. Metal sheet gauge chart. Let's find it here. Where's it at? Do you want cookies? I like cookies. Where's, where's the chart? Okay, here we go. So, what did I say about 025? Well, 024 is 24 gauge. Now, as I remember, I should measure some old car parts, shouldn't I? But it seems to me they were like 18, 19 gauge, something like that. If that's true, 18 is 047, so double the thickness. So this piece of sheet, this is pretty thin. This is, um, oh, two. yeah, this is thinner than 20 gauge. This is 025, which is about 22 is 029. 24 is 023. So it's pretty thin. I'm going to go over there and measure a piece of, uh, um, old car. How's that? See how thick it is. Actually, I got the hood. I got the, I got the hood right here. Let me measure the hood over here. Let's see what this hood is. Now let's go check it out. Here's the Model T sheet metal right here. Let's see what it is. Yeah, it's 040. That was about the same as that. 040 is, yeah, that's about 19 gauge. Yeah, 20, uh, 20 is 035. And um, 18 is 047. So that's the thickness of this thing here. I want to see what the thickness of this is. Now this is, uh, oh, there we go. There's an edge. There's an edge I can look at. Let's see what we got here. 045. Right there, 045. Yeah, 045 is about what we get. 045 is 19 gauge. So 20 gauge is um, you know, 035, 18 is 040. So this is about 19. Okay. That's about 19 right there. So what's that tell you? That tells me I spent a lot of time on that piece of sheet metal down there and I didn't get much for it. So. That was, uh, the barrel looked like what? What did I say? It was about 24 gauge. Okay, and it's a piece that's only 30, 34 by 70 inches. And it took me over an hour, over an hour to get that piece. Plus it was a mess. I got oil on my floor now and on my shoes.
But you know, hey, I could have watched TV for that hour. So I accomplished something. So we're gonna try to make a hood out of that. Actually, we're gonna make a hood. It might not be very nice, but it'll keep the rain off when it sits outside. So I think when I go to buy sheet metal, I'm gonna go buy some, what, about 18 or 20 gauge, looks like. So maybe we'll do that. guys I got the uh, sheet metal on the table and I marked it out to the right length here I'm gonna cut that and then we'll see what we got See what I got here? Right, you want me to show you? I'll show you what I got here. Okay, so this is a Milwaukee. It's called a 18 gauge shear. And the way it works is it's got these three fingers up front here. And um, this middle one moves up and down. So it shears in two places. Shears there and there. And also and it creates these nice curly cues. So you lose that much material. So it's a double shear and they end up with that piece out of there. So that's what it says. Milwaukee heavy duty 18 gauge 1.2 millimeter shear. And uh I got this a few years ago. I bought it brand new. And um works good. I think I want to buy a new set of shears though. These are uh, not shearing as good as they used to. Okay, so this is piece. I think I might beat on this a while and flatten it out a little more. Should we go see if it fits on the car? Let's see if it fits on the car. Alright, let's take it over here. Let's see what we got. Alright, let's try it out on the automobile. I might, um, I might beat some of this out of here, I might form this top curve a little bit, just to, just to do that. I think that's what I'll do, try to get, try to get most of the uh, damage out of it. It's got some good scars on it.
Okay, I'm not really trying to um, stretch the material. Just trying to uh, put it back in place. Um, I'm going to try out my anvil over there. Right there. Let's pull it out. And I'm going to try to use it to flatten things out a bit more. I think I'll mark it out. I'm going to keep the length, mark the edges, um, make our diagonal cuts. So I figure out what edge I want to be the front and the rear. So, there's some damage there. Lots of damage through here. I think that'll be the front. Front and rear. Okay, so we'll keep this end wide, narrow that end. I decided to go with the pencil because this is still a little oily. I didn't want to ruin my. Let's make a center line. That's always good. We got 33 and a half. Half of 33 and a half is 33 and one half. I'll do like 15, one and a half, and eight. So five eighths. 16 and an eight. Let's try that out. No. 16 and 5 eighths. Yeah, right there. 16 and 5 eighths. Oh, uh, that didn't work out. What am I doing here? Thirty-three and one half. Well, if it was thirty-four, it'd be seventeen. So it'd be at one quarter under seventeen. Okay, how are they thought? Sixteen and three quarters. There you go. Sixteen and three quarters. So there's our center line. Sixteen and three quarters. Let's see, we go back here. 16 and 3 quarters. Okay, and there's the center back here. Now what do we decide? What, what's the front? Front, right? Yeah, so this is the rear. Okay. And we wanted um, 16 at the rear which equals 32, 33 and a half. So that'd be three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch right there. Okay. 
All right, let's see what we came up with. Let's see what we got here. First go around, anyway. I think I'm happy with that. It's uh, way better than it was. Now, one thing I got to do though is I got to. My front grill isn't real square; it's all wonky. I got to come up with the correct grill. I don't know if it's going to be that one. Or the 29, or the underneath there, there's a 31, or we got a couple of choices up there. So I think that's what I need to do is I need to get the grill that I want in there. Um, but I'm happy overall with with how it's coming together. Um, I did make a, a a serious boo-boo. Not sure what I did, but I had the wrong dimension here. This should be down here further. So, but that's that's one of the reasons I made it out of this because um, I'm learning. I, I I I've never. It's the first time I ever used this thing, and um, I'm just kind of learning, learning as I go. I want to be able to do some sheet metal work that's that's okay. It'll never be professional quality, but uh, somehow I really goofed up on this dimension. I don't know how I did that, but as you could tell. This barrel wouldn't even have worked. I mean, that's that's the maximum width. That was the height. So if I went with barrel steel, it would have to be the other way. What I'll probably end up doing is 
I'll use this like it is. And uh, when I get, get see, that'll, that'll keep the uh, engine out of the rain because next week this is going back outside. I need to bring that car in and do the front bumper. So, but I like it. So, I'm going to play around with taking some dents out and this bead back here. I want to curl it over. Um, but I need to get my stuff working over there. And as you can tell, I don't have it ready. I got a bead roller back in there that I want to set up. Um, yeah, you can see. See this? This is about right here. But this needs to go down about there. So, so it was a good... Good... Um, Good teacher. That's what it did. But I like it overall. Um, let's check out the clearance underneath things here. See how much room we got. I don't know if you could see that. I can't really see it. That was just a bunch of stuff piled up. But I think we got an inch and a half or so on top of the clearance off the. Uh, uh, you can't really tell. What do you call it? air cleaner? So yeah, but I do like it, and I learned a lot. So and also when I go to do this this radius, I should mark where it goes instead of just eyeballing. This whole thing was just kind of an eyeball. But that's okay. It'll do. It'll do its job. I've got to figure out how to secure it so it'll stay stay there in the wind. And, um, and then next week it could go outside. Hood looks long because usually hoods stop right there, so it really has a long look to it. But I, I kept it long so I could trim it and everything. Anyway, I'm going to beat on this a while. See if I can't get some of this out. And also I need access to my English wheel over there. That would really help getting, getting these little ripples out of here. But that's what I got today. Yeah. Yeah, I need to uh, pull some of that out of there. But that's okay. It'll do the job. I keep repeating myself, don't I? But, uh, you know, this is something, I know it doesn't look like much, but this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. And this is just the beginning. Um, you know, I've only been on this a couple months. But I'm trying to get set up. To bend these. And start bending sheet metal. And that's what needs to happen back here in this corner. I need to clear all that out and set up my tools. So, that's the plan. Yeah, you can see really see the height right, height difference there on the hood. The back needs to be quite a bit taller. Not sure how I did that. I really goofed up on that measurement. Oh well, doesn't matter. Okay, that's the end of the video for today. I took about two and a half hours worth of raw video and reduced it down to less than an hour. And uh, this is what you get. Till next time, adios. Bye-bye.